Okay, going back to understanding the weapons. From the minute I have a gun in my hand, it's nothing but a piece of metal if I never held one, let alone shot one. Okay, so if I never held or shot a gun, it's part of the studying and understanding of gun disarming. I have to go to a shooting range under a certified instructor and get trained. Understand the mechanism, shoot it, see how it reacts, how it feels. Once I get that, I will have a better understanding of the mechanism, meaning that I will have a greater knowledge of how to operate my gun. As you've seen before, I, ha I held my attacker in one hand before and using the other hand in order to control the weapon. Now, in order to do that, I have to know the principles of shooting and operating a gun single-handed. Let's say my other hand is occupied at the moment. I've got to know how to clear the jam. I've got to know how to clear the mechanism in order to make it active again, in order to make it possible to shoot with. I got rear sights on the gun. I'm going to grab a hold, whether in a holster or in a belt or in any fold of my body, clearing the chambers and utilizing again. Now, in any case of malfunction, whether my hand is injured or preoccupied, I have to go in certain position to release magazines, reload magazines, recock the weapon, and utilize it in any way or any threat, eliminate any threat that might come in my way. Okay, the second position is attack from, from the rear, attacking from the back. It's a very dangerous position because now I cannot really see fully my attacker. But I do have my peripheral vision. My peripheral vision helps me to identify whether he's holding a gun or just placing his finger instead of, instead of a gun. I need to see on what, which hand is he holding uh, the gun, maybe just putting his finger. I need to see if he's serious, maybe it's someone I know. Okay? Always as a guideline rule, if I'm going to turn to the right, I'm going to create a distraction by lifting my hands up and talking to the left. Now, he would probably expect me to turn this way. Yet, in the same time, what I'm going to do is talk to my left, slide my arm slightly, and pivot to the right. As you can see, I trap the hand on the wrist, securing the barrel, pointing it to his face. From here and on, I can perform the strikes and punches that I want. I can tear the gun, headbutt, grab knee, come back with a gun, come back with a gun retention. This would be performed from the right side. We also got the option to perform it through our left side. Now, pretty simple. If I perform it on the right side, I would talk with my head turning left. If I'm going to turn to the left side, just opposite. I'm going to talk to the right. He would expect me to turn from here. Also, again, try to identify whether he's holding a gun and maybe he's holding it on his opposite hand. So as I look right, I turn left towards him, holding the wrist, nothing, ab nothing above it or nothing below it, securing the wrist, strike, escort it with an elbow, secure the gun, getting the knee inside, striking, going back in a gun retention position. Okay, let's talk about a very important subject as part of, we got the technical part. Let's talk about evaluating the situation. Evaluating the situation is pretty much understanding the state of mind of your attacker to realize your own state of mind because a gun threat is not any um, bar fight or just a brawl or someone pushing you. It's an immediate, crucial, threatening, life-threatening situation. It's something that it's either you get out of or not, pretty much 50-50. That's why it's really important to evaluate your attacker's situation, his state of mind. Maybe someone pulls a gun at you, hey, give me your money, give me your wallet, give me your watch. You give it to him. Sometimes it's not, it's just not worth the fight. You know, everything can be replaced. Your life cannot be replaced. If your life is in danger, if your loved one's lives are in danger, then you gotta operate. If you know the guy is just a punk that is looking to get 
some change or to get your wallet or your watch, just hand it over. If you see that the guy has got serious intentions, such as a terrorist attack, or the guy is really determined to kill you or create you any serious bodily harm, you don't operate, you operate, you do not think, you operate. And from that time on, everything is in one motion. Go forward, eliminate that attack. Okay, knowing the state of mind is also reading the body language, showing signs of aggress aggressiveness, fear, intentions. Maybe the guy, like I said, maybe the guy is not want wanting to kill you. Usually, people that are held at gunpoint is, are pretty much want something from you. In most cases, they want to take something from you. They don't want to take your life. Therefore, you've got to evaluate the situation properly. For example, if I'm stressed out or if I'm aggressive towards my attacker, that's why I told you, get your hands up. Don't get in a fighting position and don't get aggressive with your attacker because he might retaliate and more aggressive coming out of fear. A lot of psychology is involved with that. We're not getting into that aspect. But pretty much what we want to maintain is calmness. I want to be calm as, far, as much as I can be when a gun with a live round inside is held to my head or my body. I want to stay calm. I want to re remember my training. Before it's really crucial, we go through the technique and train a lot. Train them and train them and go over them and over and over and over until they're in our muscle memory and we just operate those technique, perform the technique and execute them like they are second nature, like a reflex to us. I've got to maintain calm. You, got, you can go through practice a thousand times, but when it really comes to that, you have to stay calm and remember that there's only one shot. There is no second chance here. Also, we've got to identify, like I said, signs of aggressiveness at, with our attacker. Again, if he is determined to kill us, a suicide move like we discussed before might be in handy or necessary to perform and to save our lives or our loved ones. If not, let him go with the technique. Uh, let him, I'm sorry, let him go with, uh, with the money, with the wallet. Perform the technique and keeping the technique only for last resort. If I don't have any option, if everything else fails, maybe I can talk him out of it. Maybe I can just cooperate and save my life. If everything else fails, this is where those techniques are coming handy. Why is are very risky techniques, but they've been proving to, proven to work in most cases. There is not, never 100%. But in most cases, if executed properly, if staying and remaining calm, you might have a very good chance of saving your life from a gun, attack, robbery, any weapon, assault, or intention to harm you.